Hello, Blake Groot is here with F64 Academy and F64 Elite, and today I'm going to put Luminosity Masks and Blend If in a head-to-head -head fight. Well, it's not going to be quite as epic as you think, but I get this question all the time. What's the difference between them? What's the difference between a Luminosity Mask and Blend If? Well, today I'm going to tell you. So let's jump into Photoshop because I got a lot of stuff to talk about here. Before we begin this epic battle between luminosity masks and blend if, we gotta talk about luminosity masks. I'm just kidding, it's not gonna be an epic battle, okay? It's actually gonna be, this is the basics of luminosity masks and the basics of blend if, and why both of them are important in your workflow and how they can help if you use them together, okay? Think of them as a team and not a versus thing, okay? I'm gonna go through this rather quickly because there's a ton of tutorials on the internet about luminosity masks, and there's a ton of tutorials on the internet about blend if. I've done several of them myself. So this is mainly a comparison. I'm gonna give you the basics of each of them and kind of go rather quickly through some things, okay? But I've created some actions for you. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy it. So basically the idea behind luminosity mask is a luminosity mask is really kind of a carbon copy of your image in black and white, but set as a mask. Because we know that if we edit things that are white on a mask, those are things that are going to be affected by the change. Things that are black will not be. So a luminosity mask allows you to create these luminance value style masks from a black and white image of your image, okay? It's kind of hard to think about, but watch, watch me and I'll show you. So the first thing I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna press Control Alt Two, and that is the hotkey to make a luminosity mask. When I press Control Alt Two, I'm going to go to the curves adjustment layer, and then if I press Alt or Option here, that's that's the basic concept behind the luminosity mask. I told you it's a black and white carbon copy of our image. That if we edit this, if we were to move this up and down, you'll notice that things that are white are are being affected a lot more so than things that are in the black area. With things that are in our midtones being affected also because the, of the spread between black to white and kind of how you you would use pen pressure on your mask. Okay, so to prove that it's basically a black and white image of our of our image, a black and white mask of our image, I'll press Command or Control J on the background copy, and then Control Shift U. I'm basically just making a black and white version of our image. Now, typically here, if I press Alt or Option on a curves mask here, that's going to show us exactly what is going to be affected, and it's going to show us on a black and white version of that mask. So you see that there's nothing different between this luminosity mask and our black and white image. And I can prove that also if I click Alt or Option and click on the curves adjustment layer there. Now you see the mask, okay? So one of the things I want to show you here is that typically people will give you a highlights, midtones, and shadows rendition of your luminosity masks. So if you were to press Alt or Option and click on that mask, this shows you exactly what the mask is. Well, you can actually make modifications to a mask. You can blur it. You can do all kinds of things to a mask. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to Image, go to Adjustments, and go to Curves. So let's say I was going to give you a mid-tones luminosity mask. I would create that from this mask like this. This is my preferred way to do it. I would bring this all the way down here. So basically our mask is now all black because we just told it take all the white information out. But now I'm going to tell it, hey, bring some of that mid-tone information back. Notice how this is now making a mask for my mid-tones. If I bring this over, it's going to protect my blacks all the way until this zone. If I bring this over, it's going to protect my whites all the way in this zone. So basically, I have a very strong selection right now for my mid-tones. And if I press OK, now our luminosity mask is only affecting our mid-tone areas and not our uh, whites and our blacks. Okay. So if we go up here to our actions, I've created an action for you that actually breaks down your image into all the luminance values. So if you press this all luminosity mask button, you press play, and it's going to give you all the luminosity masks set to luminosity. So it only affects your tones and not your colors. What you're also going to notice here though, is I've added a color overlay to these. So if you click on this color overlay, that's basically going to show you exactly what's being edited on your image. And you could always just press alt or option and click here and see what's being edited on your image too. But the reason why I'm showing you this with this color overlay is I'm going to show you the difference and the power between blend if and luminosity masking. Okay. Now I've showed you the basic luminosity masking. Let's talk about editing with the luminosity mask. Let's say we're just going to edit our highlights here. Alter option. That's our highlights. I'm going to make a curves adjustment layer for this and just bring this down. So that basically I'm going to say, tell my, my highlights in here to get a little bit darker. So now the only thing being affected here 
is our highlight areas of the image. And I can tell by pressing Alt or Option or even clicking on this effect here to show you exactly where the highlights are that are being affected. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to show you how Blend If comes in. Okay, so I'm going to duplicate this layer by pressing Command or Control J just to get the exact copy of this curve. And I'm going to drag and drop this into the trash can. Okay, so I don't want my mask on there. What I want to show you here is how you can use Blend If to do very similar things. So if I double click right here, I'm going to get the layer styles, which will open up the blending options for that layer and allow us to use Blend If, which is another way of protecting our areas in our image. I don't want you to think about blend if as this, oh, well, blend if, think about it as protections, okay? Think about it as I'm gonna protect the underlying layers of my image right here. So if I move this over, this is saying that this curve is not affecting my darks, it's not affecting my midtones, and it's only coming right in here into my highlights, okay? And I can make this a more natural transition if I press Alt or Option and begin to feather it. All right, press OK. So now we see, if we turn on that eyeball here for our effect. It's very similar to the eyeball effect that we have for this highlights. So this highlight adjustment right here on a luminosity mask is the same thing as this blend if up here. Okay, we're basically selecting the same areas. We're just doing it differently. One way is with luminosity masking and one way is with blend if. So why would people use blend if as opposed to luminosity masking and vice versa? Well, you should actually have a solid foundation in both of them in your workflow because they're extremely powerful. The first instance here, let's look at the luminosity mask, okay? So the luminosity mask, if we look at this, we press Alt or Option on this, this is basically a snapshot or a stamp of exactly what we do to our image, okay? Anything that happens to this or happens underneath this is not gonna be affected because the only thing that we're affecting here is exactly what we're telling this luminosity mask to affect. So it's kind of like a, a stamp or a carbon copy of our highlights. So as we adjust those highlights, this is the only thing that's going to be affected. So now let's turn this off for a second. Let's come up here to blend if. So with our blend if, this is kind of like a hybrid adjustment, okay? Because watch what happens here. If I come down here and I create a curves adjustment layer, and the really important thing that you're gonna see here that I really want you to take away here is when we turn these eyeballs on, on these different layers, okay? So I'm gonna take this curves adjustment layer and I'm gonna bring this up really high right here, okay? This adjustment layer is underneath all of this work up here. So if I click on this one, Notice how nothing really changes here. We still have the same effect, okay? This curve that we're using right here in this highlight is all the same effect. So nothing's happening to this one. But watch when we turn this one on. Watch what happens now. So you see our selection now for our highlights is actually growing hybridly based on what's happening underneath. So the difference, the main difference between blend if and luminosity masks, okay? Luminosity masks are gonna be a snapshot in time of a selection that you want to edit. And blend if is going to be a hybrid selection based on what you tell it in the layer styles. So notice when I turn this curves adjustment layer off, we're back to the exact same adjustment that we made with this luminosity mask down here, okay? So anything that happens underneath this layer, underneath this highlights copy layer here, as we adjust it, is going to change. So when we modify and move this curves adjustment layer, it's modifying and moving that curves adjustment layer and affecting all of these highlight areas as those highlight areas grow. We turn that layer off on the bottom and we're back to where we were from square one because nothing has changed underneath. The difference between the luminosity mask though is that the luminosity mask is not going to change regardless of what we do to this top layer. Why? because it's only selecting that one instance of highlights. And at this point, those highlights are being really blown out by what's going on underneath. But this one allows us to give, to give us uh, hybrid, hybrid movements of what's going on underneath it based off of the highlights that are coming in from below. So that's really the main difference. But I don't want you to have this narrow-minded thinking that you only have luminosity masks or blend if. You can use both. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna create a luminosity mask right here. I'm just gonna say only midtones for my midtone areas. And with this adjustment, I'm gonna do something like, I'm gonna make it really dark, okay? I'm gonna just squeeze this in and make it really dark. And notice how what's happening in the sky, I really like what's happening in the sky with this only midtones. And I could come down here and I could start masking this area out, 
But watch what happens if I come down to this action and I say only midtones. Now it's happening. I'm basically telling it that I only want the midtone areas of the midtones to be affected. So if I were to come in here and say clear my blend if by pressing play on this, you'll notice it's now affecting everything. If I go back here and press only midtones, it's only the midtone areas of the midtones. Okay, so you get dual protection. So let's go ahead and click this vis visual eyeball on so we can see what's happening here. If I say clear blend if, all right, notice how the area that's actually being affected here is everything that this luminosity mask is telling us, right? But if I were to say only the highlight areas of that, notice how we're only affecting the highlight areas of the midtones of this image. Now this is kind of kind of mind blowing a little bit here, okay? So I'm trying to take it slow to give you an idea of how these can be used together. This mask right here is telling us that it's only going to allow the midtones of our image to be affected. But with our blend if principles that we have here because of what we selected in our action here, we're saying you can only affect the highlight areas of those midtones. This level of editing is not for the faint of heart, okay? This level of editing is for people who have a little bit of understanding of masking, definitely have some understanding of luminosity masking, and also have an understanding of blend if. But I wanna tell you this, when you actually learn these things and take the time to understand them, what's happening with blend if, what's happening with luminosity masks, you unlock a whole new potential of editing in your images that was never there before, okay? It's extremely powerful when you can say, I like the effect that's going on here, but I don't like what's going on here or here. And where you really can use this is when you're color grading your images or adding textures to your image, uh, they, they become really powerful. So if we were to do this, if we were to come in here and add a solid color layer and make, make that solid color layer, maybe an orangish color, okay? And then with this orangish color, we drop the opacity a little bit, maybe change this to color, some kind of color grading the image. Now I can come in here and say, okay, I like what it's doing to the photo, but I don't like how it's affecting the entire thing. We can press play and say, okay, only affect those highlights or only affect those midtones or only affect those shadows. So notice how this can be very effective when you're color grading images or if you're using things like textures, because now you can say, hey, texture, only apply yourself to the midtones, only apply yourself to the highlights, only apply yourself to the shadows, or you can even get a luminosity mask for further protection. All right, so I know the stuff that I've shown you here is extremely heavy, okay? This stuff is kind of difficult to take in one sitting. You might have to watch this video several times in order to understand it. But another thing that I've done here is I've created a series of actions for you that do a lot of this work for you so that you can experiment with them. What you're gonna see in this is some luminosity mask for only your highlights, only your midtones, only your darks, and another one here that will select all of your luminosity masks and give you a selection of all three of these. And then down here, I've got only highlights, only midtones, only shadows, which are gonna be your blend if settings, where if you press play on those, it'll automatically do some of the blend if stuff to protect certain areas. So what that means is that you only want your midtones to be affected by what it is when you click and press play on this, okay? Beyond that, in the Zone System Express, you'll see a lot of the stuff in the Zone System Express, which is an extension that I've created for Photoshop. These are kind of like luminosity masks that are right in here that do certain selections for you, much more than just the three that you have here. But also in the Zone System Express, you have down here only darks, no darks, only mids, only lights, only and no lights. You see that I've taken that those blend if principles and put them right here into this extension as well. So it's a very useful extension, but it also comes with a ton of education to teach you how to use this stuff on a different level. So kind of like what you see here, this is like a 15 minute crash course on luminosity mass and blend if. The Zone System Express is several hours of content on how to do this stuff. So the basic, basic principles here, the basic differences. Luminosity masks are a snapshot of a selection. Okay, when you modify anything on that, it's only going to affect that snapshot of that selection. But blend if, blend if is a hybrid adjustment. When you use the blend if and those protection principles, anything that happens underneath that is going to affect what you told it to protect. So if the image gets darker underneath, your, your, your selection might expand or contract based on what you've selected in that underlying layer protection area, okay? So it's really cool because let's say you're doing noise reduction or sharpening. Those are great ways to use blend if because if you put those at the top of the stack, Whatever adjustment that you created with that at the top of the stack will only affect those midtones or those highlights as it goes through. And as those things change underneath, let's say your shadows get darker. Well, it'll keep protecting that area based off of what you told it to protect in the blend if principles. I've been messing around with luminosity mass and blend if for a long time. Um, and I understand that 
in one sitting, this is very difficult to, to take in. But experiment. It's the only way you're going to get better with this stuff, experiment. So again, my name is Blake Rudis. Please download those actions and consider taking a look at the Zone System Express because there's a lot of really cool stuff in there for you to see. Thanks again for taking the time to watch this. Thank you.